Hey, good afternoon, everybody. God bless you guys, as always, declaring a very blessed and prosperous and healthy day and evening over you and your family. All right, the title of today's message, These Four Are a Must, all right? Now, I'm specifically speaking from my own experience, but also with what the Word of God says, all right? And these specific four things being a must in our lives if we wanna walk successfully as a son or daughter of God, doing the things that God has told us to do, amen? And actually seeing results. All right, so let's get started with a word of prayer and then we'll get into this message. These four things, and we talk about them all the time, but I believe I'm gonna come at it in a different way this time. But these four things are a must. So Father God, we just thank you. Father, right now, as always, first and foremost, for our Lord and Savior Christ Jesus, for the Holy Spirit who lives and dwells mightily on the inside of us. And we thank you for your word, which is alive and full of power. We thank you for one another. We thank you for the anointing, which empowers us to always have both feet firmly planted in your kingdom, in your way of doing things, position that we are constantly hearing your voice, empowered to do what you're telling us to do. And we're always walking in your word and your ways at all times. Father, as always, I thank you for open hearts and open minds, open eyes and open ears, Lord, that we are positioned right now to receive everything that you have for us. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Okay, so the title of the message, once again, these four things are a must, okay? Now, I make this statement all the time. It's a staple statement of my ministry right from the beginning, all right? Now, according to, once again, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 21 the promise of the holy spirit through paul here's what he says and may the very god of peace sanctify you wholly and i pray god your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved and blameless unto the coming of our lord jesus christ and once again that word whole or holy is w-h-o whole nothing broken nothing missing spirit soul and body and that statement right the core staple statement of this ministry if you will properly feed nourish and exercise your spirit man and your physical man then your soul which is your mind will and emotions will be whole and happy and healthy and at peace henceforth once again three john one two beloved i will above all things that you would prosper and be in good health even as your soul prospers. So these specific four things are a must. And that is one, how do we properly feed, nourish, and exercise our spirit man? Well, Jesus said man does not live by bread alone. Man lives by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. So the feeding of your spirit is done with the word of God. The word of God is the food for your spirit. And he specifically said that in Deuteronomy chapter eight when he had the children of Israel in the wilderness, which was the land of just enough, and he was moving them into the land of more than enough, the promised land which he had given them, but he instructed them that they had to go in and possess. What was the primary purpose of the wilderness? They were brought out to be humbled, a place to where their faith would be tested so that God might prove to them that man does not live by bread alone, but man lives by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. It's the same thing that Jesus quoted to Satan in the desert when he was being tempted by him. When Satan said, Jesus, turn, if you really be the son of man, the son of God, turn these bread, turn these stones into bread. That was after a 40 day fast. So Jesus was starving. He was saying to him, no, I have food that you know not of. The food, I am the bread of life. Feeding your spirit, right? Exercising your spirit, feeding properly your physical man and exercising your physical man. What is the result? A prosperous, healthy soul. And one of the reasons I keep talking about this is because I see so many people within the body of Christ, born again, children of God, people that have accepted Christ, people that are filled with the spirit, but so much of the time, we're just neglecting the temple. We're neglecting the physical body. And because of that, there is a compromise in the soul. There is a compromise in the, in the mind, will, and emotions. And that's where people are really struggling, 
okay? So Romans 12, 1 and 2, I talk about this all the time. Such a wonderful promise, primary directions, instruction from the Word of God as to what we're supposed to do to know and experience the will of God. Romans 12, 1 and 2, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God that you present your body, a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service, and the Amplified Classic says, and a form of spiritual worship unto him. And do not be conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you might prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God for your life. So these four things, Properly feeding, nourishing, and exercising your spirit man, so physical exercise, I'm sorry, spiritual food and spiritual exercise for your spiritual man, which is feeding on the word of God. And the primary form of spiritual exercise is intercessory prayer. Amen. Taking the time specifically to pray, to pray in the spirit, whether it's in English, whether it's in tongues, but praying according and in line with the will of God. Really, really taking time to develop your faith, to study what it means to be consistently involved in effective prayer. Because in the process of doing that, not only are you making a difference in the lives of other people, you in turn are getting built up. Your spirit is being fed. Your spirit is being strengthened, right? And that life spills over into the soul, into the mind, will, and emotions. There's a reason in Acts chapter 6, right? Whenever the church was just getting started, and the apostles figured this out. There was all this other work going on. But in Acts chapter 6, verse 4, they said, look, all of these other works, all of these other things are important. And we have chosen seven specific men that are filled with the Spirit of God to attend to these things. But as for us, Acts chapter 6, verse 4, but we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the Word of God. Meaning we're going to be studying the Word of God. We're going to be ministering the Word of God. And we're going to spend time continually in this place of prayer. So we're planting the seed of the Word of God into our own lives. We're feeding ourselves. We're feeding other people. And now we're, we're watering all of that seed through the practice of intercessory prayer. So the feeding of the Word of God and, and intercessory prayer are two of the four. And I believe with all my heart, the other two that are a must are the proper feeding and nourishing, the feeding, nourishing, the feeding and exercising of your physical man, the physical body. Amen? Now what happens here when we continually give ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the Word of God? We are committed to studying the Word of God, meditating on the Word of God, confessing the word of God over our lives and over the lives of others that leads right into the place of consistent intercessory prayer, moving into that place now where I'm praying in the spirit. But notice, what am I doing? I'm, not, I, I, I'm continually not being conformed to this world. I'm being transformed by the renewing of my mind so that the mind of Christ now activated in my soul, the word of God is where? Continually in the forefront of my thinking. See, I know a lot of people that are very, very big on physical nutrition and physical exercise, okay? Some of them have really good results, but I also notice a lot of inconsistencies because you are a spirit, you have a soul, you live in this body. If you're just attending to the physical body, but neglecting the soul and neglecting the spirit man, then you can be in great shape, but your soul is not healthy your spirit's starving, and you're really, really struggling in the area of a, a lot of different areas of life, all right? So now watch this. When my mind is continually renewed to the Word of God, when I'm continually feeding my spirit with the Word of God, when I'm continually staying in this praise, place of intercessory prayer, right? Constant communication with God in faith, not coming to Him in doubt and wavering in unbelief, but really knowing what His Word says, coming to him consistently, coming boldly to his throne of grace, knowing he lives and dwells on the inside of me, now the word of God, his voice is continu continually in the forefront of my thinking. Now James, chapter 3, verses 1 and 2. My brethren, be not many masters, or the Amplified says classics, not many of us should become teachers, knowing that we shall receive the greater responsibility, meaning we're going to be held more accountable. For in many things we offend all, and if any men defend not in word, the same is a perfect man and able also to bridle the whole body, to control the whole body. Control the tongue, control the body. Control the tongue, no more issues in the physical body. The physical body now is strong. It's tapping into the empowerment of the spirit man. 
Now, rather than just trying by my own willpower to properly feed, nourish, and exercise my physical man, now I've tapped into the empowerment of the Spirit. I'm continually putting forth the Word of God. I'm confessing words of life and Spirit. What's that doing? What, that, what is that doing? That is taking the life of the Spirit man and transferring it and manifesting itself into my physical body. Now it's not very difficult. I don't have to come from a place of discipline to properly feed, nourish, and exercise my physical man anymore. Now I do have a desire to take care of the temple. I do have a desire to put the right things in, on the inside of my body. But if I don't have the first two, remember the title of the message, these four things are a must. If I don't first, because being a spirit man, properly feed, nourish, and exercise my physical man by feeding consistently on the word of God, by taking, by taking time each and every day to spend that time in intercessory prayer, right? Prayer in the spirit, strengthening, exercising my spirit man, that spills over into the area of constantly renewing my soul, renewing my mind, building up and strengthening my soul. Henceforth, once again, 3 John 1, 2, Beloved, I will above all things you prosper and be in good health, even as your soul prospers. Now that positions me to consistently take care of my physical body, to consistently take care of my temple. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, 16 and 17, Know ye not that ye are the temple of God? and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy, for the temple of God is holy, which temple you are. And in the book of Peter, it says you were bought and purchased with a price. With what price? With the body and blood of Jesus. He goes right on to say, right again in 1 Corinthians 6, 19 and 20, what, know ye not that ye are the temple of God? I'm sorry, what, know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost? which is in you, which you have of God, and you are not your own, for you are bought with a price, therefore glorify God in your body, ready? And in your spirit, which are God's. How do you glorify him in your spirit? Properly feed, nourish, and exercise your spirit man every day with the word of God and intercessory prayer. How do you glorify God in your body? Properly feed, nourish, and exercise your physical body by putting the right things into it, by taking care of it, to exercise, to do what you have to do as you're led and guided by the Spirit, what's the result? A prosperous, healthy soul. Now think about this. You are the temple of God. God desires to live and dwell on the inside of you, to think through you, to speak through you, to live through you, not just in your spirit, man. He wants to be manifesting in and through you, in your spirit, in your soul, and in your physical body. And as you have the word of God in the forefront of your thinking, because your mind is continually renewed and you're continually staying in this place, a place of communication with him all day through intercessory prayer. And that, that is what he desires. That is more than possible. That is the walk that we should be walking. Now that word is constantly going forth from you. You're only speaking words of life and spirit. And as you do that, guess what? You're able now to bridle the whole body. This body now comes under subjection and submission to your spirit man, and you no longer have to be disciplined to put the right things into it, to take care of it. And I really believe that's where one of the benefits of Psalm 103, 1 through 5, that fifth verse, right? What does it say? He satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth renewed is like the eagles. There's only words of life and spirit coming out of your mouth that is having a major effect on your physical body. The soul is healthy. The mind is continually renewed with the word of God. The mind, the will, and the emotions are stable and strong and secure. And the health of your soulish man is now spilling over into your physical man. And where's all that life coming from? From your spirit man. Because you've been properly feeding, nourishing, and exercising your spirit man with the word of God and intercessory prayer. And not only are you getting built up, but you're now being effective for everyone and everything around you. So Father God, I thank you so much, Lord, for your word, which is alive and full of power in our lives. Revelation in this area that we desire the promise of 1 Thessalonians 5.23, that we are whole, that we are sound, and we are complete. Nothing broken, nothing missing, spirit, soul, and body. All three, not neglecting any of them. So Father, I thank you for that. I declare and decree that anointing, that promise over each and every person that's listening right now, and together we receive it mightily. In Jesus' name, amen.
God bless you and have a good night.